Are you able to see it? Yes. All right. So yesterday we are discussing about, uh, uh, you know, plastic, no, sorry, fixation, right? Fixation means preserving a tissue or mummification. Mummification is a very broad statement, okay? Usually we will do fixation in the labs, okay? Uh, to preserve, if you go for whole body, then it can be stated as a mummification. And I discussed about a very nice story about uh, Rosalind, uh, uh, Rosalia Lombardo. So Rosalia Lombardo is a, a two-year child who has been died because of tuberculosis and her father has uh, embalmed, okay, or uh, preserved her body. So very beautiful mummy actually, you know, sleeping beauty they used to say. So this is Rosalia Lombardo's story and uh, yeah, due to some optical illusion she will turn on the, you know, uh, she will close her eyes and open the eyes, that's an optical illusion. And I discussed about uh, the tradition of uh, mummification. It's a very ancient uh, uh, technique, which is there by Egyptians. They have done many mummies. Uh, so Egyptians are really believed that uh, uh, the kings are gods. They thought they are not humans. They are descendants directly from the, you know, Ra, Ra means sun god. Anyway, yeah. So this is one of the well-preserved mummy. You can see the tattoos of the mummy there and you can able to feel the texture of the skin and even eyebrows are intact. And one interesting thing about mummies, you know, what Egyptians thought about uh, uh, thoughts, you know, where the thoughts are preserved in the body. They thought that uh, uh, the thoughts are in the heart but not in brain. You know why they felt it? They thought that uh, if you love someone or whatever, your heartbeat will increase. So heart is the emotional center of the body. Okay, so in all, almost all the Egyptian, you know, in mummies, they don't have the brains. They, they kept a, uh, a small iron loop and they removed the brain from the head. They thought it's useless. But they preserved the heart in a nice spot, assuming it has everything. Okay, technically it looks like that, but uh, brain is one of the underrated organ in the body. And the credits went to the heart, actually. Okay, poor little brain. Um, yeah, these are the mummies and uh, I think I said my own story that this is my college and uh, we used to do these things and I said about uh, Franklin Stein's uh, experiments with kites and electricity, very interesting. Anyway, he lost his life because of same experiment. So they used to study many dead bodies and uh, yeah, so one of the experiments I said that they kept a electrodes to the body, positive and negative and uh, you know the hands started lifting. So they thought they thought that uh, electricity has some life. Life is nothing but electricity. Okay. So there is another experiment where they started, you know, a jumping frog experiment. Then uh, that is how the monster came alive. That is a uh, Franklin Stein's monster. You just take a dead body, keep two electrodes, it will become your robot. So that is the idea behind this uh, dead uh, body, Franklin Stein. And this is how I used to study, I said yesterday. And uh, yeah, this is my anatomy, a hunter's lab. So in our hunter's lab, this is my first uh, time I'm seeing my, our own lab actually. So these are the bodies in our lab. And uh, we have done some of the dissections on these two bodies. Uh, by the way, I want to tell one more point here. Uh, I personally asked my uh, ma'am, okay, Dr. Prasanna, how we got these bodies? How they purchased these bodies? Are they donated? Are they willing to donate their body or not? Uh, I came to know that these are orphaned bodies in the hospitals. So someone admitted the patient, patient died in the hospital and hospital took take care of their bodies. So they, they sent to the cadavers, you know, they preserved them. Yeah, sometimes this happens. Maybe we don't know whether they are privileged, underprivileged or beggars, we don't know. But uh, usually the protocol of getting cadavers into the lab is we cannot give a fresh body to, uh, to the students. They won't allow a body that will bleed if you cut it. We won't give any fresh bodies to the students. Uh, at least the criteria is two years they must be preserved under formally. Coming back to the fixation again. So uh, there is a room, you know, I went inside. There is a room with many tubs, okay? Uh, tubs means very big tubs, okay? Cement tubs. And they kept many wood, uh, playwoods, uh, this much uh, thick playwoods, wood blocks, okay. And I can clearly see some of the legs are floating above. So that's how they are storing dead bodies.
So there is a tub full of formalin. They kept dead bodies and they kept some weight on it. If not, dead bodies will float. They will start doing yoga. So that we don't want it. So yeah, so, yeah, that's how we will preserve it. And you can't imagine the fumes they will, you know, they will give out. Uh, they will be very pungent to talk, um, you know, formalin. Have you smelled the formalin, by the way? Have you seen the order of the formalin in the lab? No. No? Yes, sir. It will have a strong smell. Okay. Yes, internationals can leave students. Uh, let me write their uh, names. Uh, Kabasili. Yes. Kabasili, then uh, Ms. Karabo. Uh, Ruth. Then uh, Multazim. Ms. Izzy. Then Irene. Abdul. Mukhtar, Steve, any more else? Uh, Anchika, uh, yes, Miss Anchika, then? Fatima. Fatima. Where is Fatima? Ah, uh, yes, uh, any more? Karaba, I got it. Oh, Shirab and Shijal, okay. Shirab, Sijal, any more? Christy, uh, yes, over. Uh, you can leave students. You can see in YouTube if you want. I will upload later. Class, quiet, quiet. Yes. Quick, quick. Yes, yes, Shiram. Yes, Abdul. I'll leave you quick. Ah, yes, Anchika. Run away, run away. See, they are giving build up like you are going to your country now. <laughs> See, handshake it to everyone. See? <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. Uh, pay attention. So, where am I? Yeah, uh, fixation to the bodies. So, thanks to the fixation process, today I got the opportunity to dissect the bodies. Then, uh, you know, we have removed this person's head, uh, the, the nerves of the face. Uh, yeah, so I studied from this college. That's my intention to keep it. So this is all about the fixation and uh, uh, these things. Now I will tell some really interesting things. Okay, we have class. So we have preserving human bodies in multiple methods. If you take mummification, we took a body, we kept body under a salt. We kept salt has been stuck inside the body, so the body became a preserved. Right? Or else the second approach, we submerge the body in a solution, fixative, and we preserve. Then, there is an interesting thing. I don't discuss these points, okay? Methods of fixation, all these things. Then, there is a German scientist. His name is von Gunther Hagens. Von Gunther Hagens, okay? Hagens, H-A-G-E-N-S. Very, very interesting uh, case. So, this is our von uh, Gunther Hagens, okay? So, he got inspired from Hunter, the greatest anatomist, and the Hunter used to keep a hat. So, he got inspired. He did his uh, MBBS and MD in anatomy, and he's a pathologist by profession. And uh, he rethought about uh, anatomy again. So, rather than these boring dead bodies in a solution, can't we able to make an art with a human body? Can we make a human sculptures, a human dead body sculptures? Why dead bodies are always those lifeless? Can we make art out of it? Can we, uh, can we make a taxidermy out of humans? You know, right, you used to keep that deer or a, you know, a deer frame with a real face, real head of the deer. You know, that, right? Some photo frames with actual deer with that antlers. Right? Can we make a human in such a way? That you will keep a human like this in the room. Is it okay? So that is called taxidermy. So he invented a new appro uh, new technique called plastination. Okay. So plastination means he will take uh, a plastic resin. You know nowadays in YouTube you can see they are using some plastic resins. They are making some uh, products, right? So they take a plastic resin, inject plastic resin into the body. So let the plastic uh, dry out and human tissue will become a plastic texture and it will be preserved permanently. So that is the idea behind this uh, plastination. 
and uh, he did a really interesting things he bypassed many international laws and he started working on human bodies and i will show you some of his interesting arts out of human bodies so yeah so this is the plastination actual human bodies okay uh, the skeletal system meet his uh, uh, muscular system see that that is actual muscles this is actual head you can see the neurons spinal cord peripheral nerves thoracic nerves brain all are real so he took anatomy to the next level by this technique called plastination so that is one ganta hatchins uh, you know contribution in the field of uh, anatomy very interesting uh, you just see this one and uh, the thing that i really liked about the plastination is we can even separate the delicate tissues in the body so what he did is he took a plastic resin he injected resin into the jugular vein so he injected uh, plastic resin into the blood vessels okay so blood vessels will be preserved and whole body will be discarded and i was surprised to see the outcome of uh, blood vessels in the body you just see this photo okay so these are the vessels present in your hands these are the number of blood vessels present in the hand alone so whenever we are picking from the periphery you can understand why see the thick amount of the capillaries here so these are the blood vessels just in the hand see the intricate uh, intricate mesh network okay uh, i mean you understood right the network of mesh hmm spider man ah uh, yes see uh and i want to tell one more thing that blood can able to easily flow from each and every tube of these vessels without any blockage and this is just hand and imagine the blood vessels in the whole body see here these are the blood vessels in the face a uh, one interesting thing about human faces humans have more number of blood vessels than any other animals you know why uh these blood vessels will give uh, beauty to the human faces because we don't have fur we have a exposed skin and these blood vessels will give uh, that expressions blushing so yeah beauty is possible because of blood vessels at least in humans okay so next time if you feel you are pretty you just imagine you should be thankful to your blood vessels to the capillaries okay so yes these are the tremendous outcomes of uh, one ganta hagens yeah so he did this uh, technique to the next level and i will show you his next uh, project he want to plastinize an entire human body with a horse so a man riding horse and that should be plastinized okay so that is his next project and he also tried with the elephant plastination and i will show his uh, research how he done it see here Yeah. I think audio is fine. Okay. Okay, they will show the plastination process. See? Yeah, he is trying to work out with this uh, plastination. I can't see. Yeah, this is an elephant plastination. So this is a very big project. Okay, it cost a lot, more than one crore, because so much amount of weeks. Yeah, he is that scientist. See the way he is doing. Yeah. So this is plastination.
I will go back to my last year final. So that's it, students. So what you understood by this uh, story? See, he too studied phys uh, histopathology like you, but he got that passion, and he he took that to an extent where he started working on humans. And as I said in my last lecture, can you able to preserve an earthworm properly? Can you able to preserve a cockroach properly or an ant? No, sir. But you can with your current knowledge with that lab. All the uh, reagents you want are available. But you are not working with it. You are not utilizing your resources. Even you know, mummifying a butterfly will be a, uh, a grand achievement, right? So yes, you use your uh, utilities properly, okay? So thank you very much. This is all about uh, one-car conversions. Okay. So uh, that's it. <laughs>